What's going on, music creators? It's your boy, Fly Guy J, and I'm back with another video. It's Wavy Wednesday, so you know what that means. It's time to check out another Waves plugin. Now today I'm gonna to be reviewing the Manny Mariquin Distortion plugin. I'll give you guys a quick overview of the plugin, explain what all the knobs and sliders do, and then I'll demonstrate how I use this plugin on a track I produced called Ooh Ah, featuring Prince TJ and Sonny Savage. Link in description. Go add that to your playlist. If it's your first time stopping by my channel, I go by the name of Fly Guy J. I'm a music producer, songwriter, studio owner, recording, mixing, and mastering engineer. Plus, I got a few other tricks up my sleeves. You feel me? Your boy got skills, you know what I'm saying? Cap. <laughs> <laughs> With all jokes aside, I'm trying to share the knowledge I've learned over the last several years producing and recording music. And my goal is to help you guys elevate your sound to the next level. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and help the channel grow so I can continue to provide you guys with dope educational videos on music production and music recording. If you're already a member of the crew, welcome back. And without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so I've got the Manny Mariquin distortion plugin pulled up. And this is a great plugin to use if you wanna make something sound crunchy, give it some distortion, or even go crazy and overdrive the distortion for a creative effect. Now let's take a look at the plugin a little bit more in depth and go over the functions of all of the sliders and knobs. There's basically two sections to this plugin. There's a distortion section, which consists of all the controls in this red area. And then there's the EQ section, which consists of these five knobs down here at the bottom. Now it's important to realize that this EQ section is only affecting the signal that you're sending to the distortion. It's not affecting the EQ of the direct signal. So when you tweak these EQ knobs, you're not affecting the direct signal, you're only EQing the distortion signal. So let's take a look at the controls in the distortion section. So the direct level slider is the amount of the direct signal that's being sent to the output of the plugin. So you can kind of look at it as a mix knob, which is determining how much of the original signal you want to blend with the distorted signal. If you have it all the way up at 100, then you're sending the full direct signal to the output of the plugin. If you bring this down to zero, then the only thing that you hear coming out of the plugin is the distorted signal. Anywhere in between is a mix of the two signals. The distortion level slider controls the amount of distortion that's coming out of the plugin. So as you increase this, you get the maximum amount of distortion. And as you decrease this, you get the minimum amount of distortion leaving the plugin. Now this slider doesn't affect the amount of distortion that you're actually putting on the signal. It's only controlling what's leaving the plugin. So you can think of this as the volume slider on your auxiliary track. So it's basically controlling volume of the distorted signal. The actual amount of distortion that you're putting onto the input signal is controlled by this drive knob. So if you decrease this, you get very little distortion. And if you crank this up, you can get some crazy amounts of distortion. So you can play with the drive knob and the distortion level to shape and blend your sound. This attack knob controls how fast the distortion effect is applied to your input signal. So higher equals less distortion at the beginning of the note. And the lower you set this value, the faster the distortion takes place. So you can hear the distortion sound kicking in right away when it's all the way down, and then it's taking a longer time as you increase this attack knob. The release knob controls how fast the distortion effect will be released from the note. So as I increase the release knob, 
you'll hear it more on the tail of the 808. It'll last a longer amount of time. As I decrease this, the amount of distortion will clean up. So with a fast attack and a fast release, you'll hear the distortion hit right away and then get out the way. As we increase the release, you'll hear the distortion lasts longer. So those are the basic controls for controlling the amount of distortion that you want to put on the signal. And on the bottom EQ section, we can use these knobs to help shape the distortion. This bass knob controls how much of the low end frequencies is being affected by the distortion. I believe this goes up to about 100 hertz. So as we decrease this, the low end is being affected less. And as we increase this, you'll start hearing more distortion on the low end frequencies. This mid knob controls the amount of mid range frequencies that are being affected by the distortion. And the EQ for the mid range is a bell shape and you can control the frequency here. It looks like you can go from 150 hertz all the way up to 5,000 hertz. So all the way down would be zero to little mid-range being affected by the distortion. And then all the way up would be lots of mid-range being affected by the distortion. And the treble knob controls the high frequency information. And the EQ for the high frequency is a shelf EQ around 9,000 hertz or 9 kilohertz. So let's listen to just the high. And finally, we have the LP or the low pass filter knob. So this will allow everything below the number you see on the bottom to pass through the plug-in and be affected by the distortion. So right now we're allowing everything below 21,000 hertz to be impacted by the distortion. And as we decrease this, you'll only be adding distortion to the very low frequencies. So the 808 that I use for this track already has some distortion on it. I just use the Manny Mariquin distortion to enhance that distortion and make it a little brighter. So what I want to do to show you guys the impact that this can have is to use the 808 sample that doesn't have as heavy of a distortion on it. So I'll be taking the infamous Spins 808 and we'll be using the Manny Mariquin distortion plugin to add some processing. So we'll start with the distortion level around 25. I'll lower the drive all the way down and then we'll boost it to start adding distortion to the signal. Now let's increase the distortion level. output some. Now let's hear it before and after. Now let's start tweaking these EQ knobs so you can get a better feel for how they affect the sound. We'll start with everything at zero and the low pass all the way up so we're sending the entire signal. And then we'll start tweaking. Let's increase the amount of bass frequencies. Let's increase the mid range. Let's increase the high frequencies. Now let's low pass. So 
So that's a very exaggerated use of this plugin, but you can see how easy, quick, and effective it is at adding distortion to your 808s. You can use this plugin and create your own custom 808s very quickly. All right, so I've got the Pro Tools session pulled up for the song I produced called Ooh Ah featuring Prince TJ and Sunny Savage. I'll let the hook play through once so you guys can get a feel for the track, and then I'll pull up the Manny Mary Quinn distortion plugin, show you guys the settings that I used on the 808 here, and then we'll dig a little deeper into the ins and out of the plugin. So yeah, man, it's a catchy track. Shout out to Prince TJ, Sunny Savage. They did their thing on this track. And now let's take a look at this plugin and see how I used it on the 808. So I've got the Manny Mary Quinn distortion plugin pulled up. And these are the settings that I use on the 808 for this particular track. If you look over here to the right in the mix window, you can see the chain that I use for the 808 processing. I have an NLS channel to give it some analog feel. And I also like to use this drive knob. I use the Fab Filter Pro Q to roll off some of the low end rumble and also roll off some of the high end that I don't need for the 808 sound. The Manny Mary Quinn Distortion plugin to help it cut through the mix a little better. The Waves Max Bass plugin to help it stand out on smaller speakers even more. This plugin adds some harmonic distortion to the signal. And finally, the Wave C6 Sidechain plugin, which I have keyed to my kick drum so that the 808 will duck whenever the kick hits to make room for the kick drum. So for this particular track, I'm using the plugin pretty sparingly. I'm driving it about 25 and the distortion amount is about 20. And what I'll do is I'll bypass this. I'll start playing the hook and then I'll engage the plugin and you can hear that extra distortion cut in, which gives my 808 a little bit more life, brightens it up and it helps it cut through the mix a little better. So this is with the plug-in bypass. And now I'll engage it. Bypass. Engage. Now let's listen back to just the 808. Off. On. Off. So hopefully that was a little bit easier for you to hear without the distractions of the other sounds in the beat. So as you can hear, it's a subtle difference but it really makes a big difference in the overall balance of the mix and it helps that 808 brighten up a little bit and stand out a little bit more in the mix. If you enjoyed the review of this plugin or if you learned something new, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment. Again, the name of this track is Ooh Ah by Fly Guy J featuring my guy Prince TJ and Sunny Savage. I'll leave a link in the description where you can go ahead and download or stream this song. Thanks again for stopping by the channel, and I'll see you next week for another episode of Wavy Wednesdays. Until then, keep creating, keep learning, and keep grinding. I'm out.